Greetings. I'm Scott Racker, Executive Director of the Robert D. and Billy Ray Center at Drake University, and I welcome you to the 28th Annual Central Iowa Chapter of the National Council on Youth Leadership and our first virtual youth salute. The NCYL is a program focused on our most outstanding high school students in the metro area. This year, 23 high schools have selected 226 youth leaders to be recognized for your significant achievements to date, including academics, leadership, and community involvement. In addition to this important recognition, our goal is to motivate, inspire, challenge, and recognize these young people at an important time in their own development and a time that their leadership can have a significant influence in their schools and our community. For close to three decades, the NCYL has been a collaborative program of the Ray Center here at Drake University, where our inspiration every day is to transform lives and strengthen communities with a mission to improve civility through character development and ethical leadership. The founding inspiration for both the NCYL and the work of the Ray Center came from the vision of former Governor Robert D. Ray. An example of that visionary leadership is reflected in Governor Ray's mission for our work to improve civility. He set a vision for Iowa to become a national model of best practices. We started our work in 1997 with one fifth grade classroom using the six pillars of character. We now work from early childhood to the corporate, community, and public service arenas. And just last year, we became the global home for character counts, now serving over 8 million youth. Governor Ray focused on bringing people together with the big picture in mind. And he also paid attention to the small details to help motivate and encourage others to success and significance. And he always focused on positive outcomes. One way to achieve positive outcomes, even in the most challenging times, is to be intentional about setting and achieving goals. We have provided a link for you with leadership development strategies related to the goal achievement process that we use in our work with higher education and corporations across the country. I hope you can take the time to listen to the information and put it to practical use both this year and in the future. I want to again congratulate each and every one of these students for their efforts. You are a gifted group of leaders and you deserve to be recognized. The laundry list of activities represented on the photo display that will travel around central Iowa is overwhelming. Your academic, extracurricular, community, and volunteer service are impressive. You are not only the future of our state and country, you are contributing leaders today who are shaping the world we live in, and we thank you. Iowan Herbert Hoover, former president said, let us remember that the great human advances have not been brought about by distinctly mediocre men and women. They were brought about by distinctly uncommon people with vital sparks of leadership. With the 2020 NCYL, we do not celebrate the common or mediocre, but these distinctly uncommon young people for their vital sparks of leadership. 28 times we have brought the best of our community's youth leaders together through the NCYL and countless numbers in preceding classes have gone on to outstanding achievements in their field of study and more importantly as great role models as moms and dads in their own family. You too have this opportunity to continue to demonstrate your leadership in a way that will make a positive difference in the lives of others. Every student in this special class of the NCYL is a leader and has an opportunity to excel to an even higher level, to learn academically, as well as develop important life skills like overcoming adversity, working together for a cause greater than yourself, and striving to lead a life of character and significance. As we celebrate your success, you now have an even more visible opportunity to be a leader. You will certainly receive many senior year accolades. This recognition is designed to be early so that you can use this recognition and experience as a tool to yet this year influence the lives of others in your school. Leaders have the capacity to teach, encourage, advocate, and model for others. And in doing so, they rise from the mediocre to the distinctly uncommon people with vital sparks of leadership, and that's you. I'm pleased that Drake University President Marty Martin 
and the chair of the Central Iowa National Council on Youth Leadership, Renee Hardman, can share important thoughts with us as we salute you, the most outstanding youth leaders in our community. Congratulations and continued success. Hello. As you just heard, I am Marty Martin, president of Drake University, and it's my great pleasure to both welcome you and congratulate you on being a part of the National Council on Youth Leadership sponsored by the Robert D. and Billy Ray Center in partnership with Drake University. And as you heard, I am the president, have indeed the blessed position of being president of Drake University. I want to reiterate a little bit of what Scott said, just to highlight a few things. The fact that this is a leadership recognition program for high school seniors who have demonstrated strong academic performance, a great citizenship, and also already shown themselves to be leaders in their schools, in their local communities, and or in their faith communities. And so we are proud to be associated with you. We're proud to be able to put this program on for you. I'm sure your parents, guardians, other family members and friends who are watching this and who have witnessed what you have done to earn this recognition are as well proud of you. And I would like to congratulate them for the contribution that they've made to your performance and to the young person that you are and are becoming. Uh, I've learned from Scott that we have 226, roughly 226 students participating in this year's program from 23 high schools across the greater Des Moines area. And I'm thrilled in those numbers, both in the number of you that are participating, but where you come from. The fact that your behavior, your leadership, uh, what you're demonstrating is across this entire central Iowa community. We take, again, great pride in that. Uh, at Drake, leadership is an incredibly important component to what we do and to how we think of our education, indeed the formation that we present to our students. And you see that in our mission statement. We promise to integrate the liberal arts and sciences with professional preparation so as to ready our graduates for meaningful, personalized, professional accomplishment and responsible global citizenship. That is to be able and to be ready and to be prepared to go out and make a difference in the world. And all of that is in furtherance of what we call our inspiration statement, our commitment to transform lives and strengthen communities. And we do that first and foremost grounded as a liberal arts university. You heard that referred, that liberal arts and science reference in our mission statement. And that means that we are going to present our students with this broad and deep education to better enable them to understand their place in the world, how they can impact it in a positive way, how they can prepare themselves to go out and be a person for others, but also to give them skills to do just that. In the liberal arts orientation, that means acquiring the skills of critical thinking, analytical reasoning, the ability to take massive amounts of data to organize it, present it back to others, thus to communicate in written and oral form, to work with others, particularly across boundaries, however those boundaries might be defined, to be followers and then ultimately leaders. And then they're going to combine that with expertise in an area, that's that professional preparation, all in furtherance of the three things I mentioned a moment ago, meaningful personalized, professional accomplishment and responsible global citizenship. Because it's that platform, meaningful personalized, professional accomplishment, responsible global citizenship, to citizenship that prepares our students to then go out and be ultimately leaders in their communities, even more powerfully than they would have been before they came to Drake. All toward the purpose of, again, transforming lives and strengthening communities. So it ultimately, our commitment to leadership is really grounded in the notion of servant leadership. It's not about any one of us who takes on the mantle of leader. It's about how we serve others, and particularly how we serve them in challenging times, and we all appreciate that at this moment in time, we are in challenging times in many different ways. We're battling the coronavirus. We're battling for racial justice. We're battling in this space of politics and perhaps battling too much in the space of politics. You know, one of the guiding principles of the Robert D. and Billy Ray Center is the notion of civility because out of civility comes understanding and out of kind of understanding comes progress. And we encourage our students and we encourage ourselves as servant leaders to ground ourselves in that notion of civility, in that value of civility. And that comes from our commitment to be here for others and to find a path forward that does benefit all. Again, transforming lives, strengthening community. And you've already shown your proclivity to do that. Indeed, that's why you're being recognized, but there's more work to be done. And I know you appreciate this. You might even appreciate it more than I do, given what you're witnessing around you 
at such an early age. But I want you to know that Drake University is a place that embodies those principles, embodies those values, those practices that are very consistent with what you've already made manifest in your own lives by virtue of the recognition that you're receiving as part of the National Council on Youth Leadership. So as you go forward, recognize always that the function of leadership, the challenge of leadership is never about you or me, whoever does take up that mantle of a leader. It's about how we use what's available to us, our own talents, our skills, our knowledge, and the opportunities that we're given, whether it's by means of being put in a position or by having some influence uh, or connection to others, we use that in service to others. We use that to solve problems that lift up our communities, that make others' lives better than they would be without us. You know, there's that old adage that we all want to, or we all at least should aspire to leave the world better than we found it. And I refer to that constantly in my kind of internal thinking as well as my external expression, that we all should have that aspiration, leave the world better than we found it. You're doing that now, but there's so much more to be done. And the next stage for you is going to be your college career and how you use your time in that environment to make a difference, but particularly how you prepare yourself during that time to make a difference over the long haul. And make a difference indeed is what we need you to do. I've already referred to the fact that we find ourselves in incredibly challenging times. And you know this, you see it every day in the news, you see it perhaps every day in your own experience, but you are ready for this and you're getting yourself even more prepared day by day, and you will as you go into college, and you will as you come out of college. And we need you to do that. We need you to accept that challenge. Uh, we really can't have anybody sitting on the sidelines these days. There's too much work to be done. There's too much good to be accomplished. We need everybody in there, whether it's at a, as a leader or a follower. And both of those roles are critically important. And at different times, one person will be one thing, and another time, they'll be the other. But they're all critically, they're both critically important and they both must be grounded in this notion of service. Service to others. Well, taking what you're already doing and building up stronger capacity, more resilience in that space, more talent, more skill in that space to continue to go forward and make a difference in the lives of others. So that's my call to you, is don't be, in a sense, uh, over, overwhelmed by what's happening around us. It is at times overwhelming, even for me, Someone who's lived the many years that I've had, I have and had been in the many uh, leadership roles that I've been in. Nevertheless, at times, it certainly does feel overwhelming, but you still got to steal yourself and step up, get up and get back in that, that, uh, that challenge, uh, that, 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 that responsibility of meeting the challenges that are confronting us. And I know you will because you're already showing that that's the kind of person that you are. So again, I'll close by congratulating you on your recognition for the National Council on Youth Leadership. I'll close by congratulating your parents, your guardians, your siblings, your other family members and friends and teachers, all who have supported you so far and who are prepared to support you even further uh, to help you accomplish, uh, to stay on this road of accomplishment that you've placed yourself on. And I do hope, I certainly do hope that after your senior year, as you move on to your life in college, that many of you will select Drake as that home, because I'm telling you, this is a place that's very consistent with what you've already shown yourselves to be. Someone who takes academics seriously, someone who takes service to others seriously, someone who takes seriously making a difference in the world. Drake, it's just that kind of place. So again, congratulations and thank you. Enjoy the rest of this presentation. Hi, my name is Renee Hardman and I am the Des Moines coordinator of the National Council on Youth Leadership. My other roles include serving as a National Advisory Board member of the Robert D. and Billy Ray Center located on the campus of Drake University. I'm proud CEO of Big Brothers Big Sisters of Central Iowa and finally a West Des Moines City Councilwoman. Let me first start off by extending my heartfelt gratitude to President Martin of Drake University, Scott Racker, Executive Director of the Ray Center, Heidi Kramer, and Hilary Ortman, and Tim Vorland Photography for the important roles that each play in the success of this unique and impactful leadership program.
I can't go any further without congratulating each of you for being in the 2020 class of selected leaders. It wasn't easy getting there and your hard work and dedication speaks for itself. I had a chance to review your applications and essays, and I am in awe at the many ways in which each of you have served others, have excellent grades, work jobs, take care of family, and most importantly, you give back to the community. Our future is in good hands, and I know if I live long enough, I will continue to see many more of your future accomplishments. While I was so looking forward to us all getting together in person, the need for us to exercise an abundance of caution and follow the CDC guidelines, we are celebrating virtually, which was, it isn't all that bad as this method provides greater access for so many to have participation in your celebration. On some other notes, the October 2020 town hall meeting on tomorrow in St. Louis, Missouri has been canceled. They are hopeful that some type of leadership experience can be made available in early 2021 for students who normally would have participated in the town meeting on tomorrow. I will personally notify four students for two males and two females who will receive an invitation to participate in this unique experience, although virtually, as soon as I hear of how the plans uh, will, will be shared. As I shared a few, as I share a few remarks today, I will center my comments around these concepts because no matter where you are in your journey of life, they are important and compelling. They are the notion of resiliency, attitude, and service to others. Let me begin with resiliency. The world as it exists today has shown us that through the many challenges of a health pandemic, economic downturn, racial tensions, and the mental health toll that 2020 has had on so many young and older folks alike, that as leaders, resiliency will prove to be one of your number one assets. So what is resiliency? The Webster Dictionary defines it as the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties, toughness, the ability of substance or objects to spring back into shape, elasticity. So what does that mean to have resiliency? What does it mean to each of you? As you travel this journey that we call life, you will undoubtedly be faced with insurmountable challenges, both ups and downs. Life won't always go your way. Just look at the seniors last year that didn't graduate in the traditional way. They missed their senior prom. Some missed their senior trips, one disappointment after another. But in the midst of it all, they survived and are getting on with their lives, many, ha many heading to college in the fall. There is a quote by John Miller that I'd like to use and share, and that is, quote, your living is determined not so much by what life brings you as the attitude that you bring to life, but not so much by what happens to you as by the way your mind looks at what happens, unquote. That leads me to the concept of attitude. The official definition of attitude is a settled way of thinking about someone or something, typically one that is reflected in a person's behavior. Attitude is a choice that we make. And I promise you that one attitude has immeasurable impact on what happens to you. And I am saying that we need to walk around in life, that we don't need to walk around in life with a smiley face on our forehead, not all the time, 
but I am saying that a person who chooses joy over hate, positivity over negativity, gratefulness over why me, openness over closed-mindedness, and have a and, 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 and have an approach to life that will ex, will have an approach to life that will exponentially offer more blessings. I have worked in HR for 30 years and I've heard many managers say to me, Joe and Sally isn't the most qualified, but surely they bring more positivity and have a can-do attitude to every project given to them. People hear your words, but they feel your attitude. Attitude is how you carry yourself, something you hold in your whole being your entire approach to the world. So I urge each of you to be self-reflective and, uh, and ask yourself, what energy do you bring forth in your daily interactions? How would someone describe your attitude? Not when things are going well, but during times of adversity and disappointment. The last concept is service, and that's one of my favorites. And as a young person, the value of giving of yourself is invaluable. When I was raised by a mom, I was raised with three, uh, two other sisters. There were three of us. And my mom's goals for us was to live a life of faith. She wanted us each to go to college. But more importantly, to always remember when you, when you give, to others, and when you go where you're going and get where you're going, always look back and find another person to lift up. Serve another. That has stayed with me all of my life as I've given service from the day that I graduated from my alma mater, Drake University. As Dr. Martin Luther King says, quote, everyone can be great because Anybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and verb agree to serve. You only need a heart full of grace, a soul generated by love, unquote. You are growing up in a world today in which we have seen for ourselves that we live in a country that includes the haves, and the have-nots. The person that has served its country well is one that empathizes with someone who is in the have-not category, someone who is different. It could be a homeless person, the elderly, the disabled, the mentally challenged. The list goes on and on. The importance of serving others cannot be overemphasized. Tapping into your gifts and passions builds self-confidence, energy, and strength. So as a current leader and a future leader, I, it will call upon you to pursue and look beyond yourself, to pursue your passion and look beyond yourself and give of your time, your talent, and treasure and finances to someone or an organization that needs you. A good life is one that requires us to be a good, faithful servant, which means that you are resilient. You maintain an attitude of gratefulness and that at the end of the day, you made life better for another person. That's service. I'd like to close by sharing with you my favorite poem, and it's called The Dash. And it goes like this, and The Dash by Linda Ellis. I, I read of a man who stood to speak at the funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on the tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted that first came the date of birth, and spoke of the following date with tears. But what he said 
matter most was the dash between those years. For that dash represents all the time they spent alive on earth, and now only those who love them know what that little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live and love and how we spend our dash. So think about this long and hard. How are things you'd like to change? For you never know how much time is left that still can be rearranged. To be less quick to anger and show appreciation more and love the people in our lives like we never loved before. If we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remembering that this special dash might only last a little while. So when your eulogy is being read with your life's actions to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say about how you lived your dash? I close with saying congratulations to each and every one of you. I am so excited about your future and what is to come and how you will live your dash. Thank you.